I'm Dr. Fergus Donahoe, and you're watching For the Love of Wisdom, my YouTube channel on free thought, philosophy, and critical thinking. In this video, we're going to begin learning about predicate logic and the rule of universal instantiation. In the previous videos of this series, we have been looking at sentential logic, or the, what we may call the same thing, propositional logic. This is logic where we use a single letter, uh, such as P or Q or something, to represent an entire sentence or an entire proposition. And we look at the logical relations between our sentences and propositions. So we're not using these letters to represent the content of the sentence. That is sort of a black box to our logic. But sometimes the content of the sentence will affect whether we have a valid argument. And that's what we're going to begin to learn about as we learn about predicate logic. Uh, so you, remember, you need to know about sentential logic as you're getting into learning about predicate logic. So if you're not caught up on sentential logic, uh, you should go back and look at the previous videos, any that you've missed, and then come back here and continue watching this video to learn how to symbolize the content of a sentence and to start learning the rules for doing proofs in predicate logic. Let's consider this argument here. It says, all calicos are felines. Holly is a calico. Therefore, Holly is a feline. This is a valid argument. Um, just examine a little bit and you can see that it is valid. But using sentential logic, we don't have any way to show its validity. Here's how we would symbolize it in sentential logic. We'd perhaps represent the first sentence as P, the second is Q, the third is R. And sentential logic doesn't give us any way to derive R from P and Q. Yet this is a valid argument. And we can prove it's valid by symbolizing the actual content of our sentences and then th using the new rule of universal instantiation and we'll show that this is valid. But let's begin by just symbolizing the two lines Holly is a calico and Holly is a feline. We symbolize Holly is a calico as capital C lowercase h and we symbolize Holly is a feline as capital F, lowercase h. And here the capital letters are standing in for predicates. And the lowercase letters are representing subjects. So you know a standard English sentence has a predicate and a subject. And so we're separating out the predicate and the subject of a sentence with separate symbols and combining them together to create a symbol representing the entire sentence. And we put the predicate first and the subject second because this is a predicate function or a propositional function, uh, particularly when we have a variable here instead of um, a named individual. But it's like a function in a programming language or in math. And so how do we want to symbolize all calicos are felines? Can we symbolize it like this? If Holly is a calico, then Holly is a feline? Well, we can't do that because all calicos are felines doesn't mention Holly specifically. And it could just as easily tell us something about other calicos or other cats or in fact, it could be true of anything at all besides Holly. So we want a new symbol that lets us represent a statement about all of something. Or all. And that new symbol is the universal quantifier. And it can be written in HTML as ampersand for all semicolon. So the universal quantifier here it looks like an upside down A. There are other ways to symbolize this, but this is a symbol I'm using here, upside down A. 
and it means for every. Now, would we symbolize all calicos are felines like so? For every x, if x is a calico, then x is a feline. And it looks like that might be the way to symbolize it, but there's something wrong with this. Because what this is really saying is if everything is a calico, then x is a feline. What we need here are parentheses to establish the scope of our quantifier here. And let me mention that a quantifier refers to the quantity of something, and the universal quantifier refers to everything. So here is how we would want to symbolize it. All calicos or felines can be symbolized as for every x, parentheses around if c of x, then f of x. And c of x and f of x are each propositional functions, and they're both bound to the x here. Uh, up here, we have an unbound propositional function, and that's about as meaningful as a blank in a sentence. So here's what the argument looks like fully symbolized. We have for every x, if x is a calico, then x is a feline. And on line two, we have Holly is a calico. And we want to prove Holly is a feline. So the first thing we're going to do is use the new rule of universal instantiation. And what this rule lets us do is go from a universal statement, uh, which a universal statement is something that has this quantifier. We go from a universal statement to a particular statement about a particular individual. Remember, the universal statement is not about a particular individual. It's about all individuals. And now we go to a statement about a particular individual. That's Holly. And we infer if Holly is a cat, then Holly is a feline. And now that we have that, we can use uh, modus ponens to get Holly is a feline from lines two and three. While we're on the subject of universal quantifiers, let me ask you, how would we symbolize everyone is mortal? Would we symbolize it like this for any x, uh, m of x, where m means mortal? Well, no, this is saying everything is mortal, not everyone is mortal. When we speak of everyone, we're normally talking about people or humans. And rather, we might mean something like all people are mortal, which we could symbolize as for any x, if x is a person, then x is mortal. Or we might mean all humans are mortal, which we might, we might symbolize as for any x, if x is a human, then x is mortal. In this video, we have just learned about the rule of universal instantiation. It says that we can go from a universal statement to a particular statement. And this rule has no restrictions on it. In subsequent videos, we're going to be learning about other quantification rules, such as universal generalization, existential instantiation, and existential generalization. And some of these have restrictions on them. Uh, let me mention right now that the mu, these are Greek letters here. Uh, this is a mu. Uh, with uh, f says for any mu, phi mu, therefore phi nu. That's a Greek letter nu. And we have the Greek letter phi. So this is saying if we have uh, a universal statement with, and this predicate can be a single predicate. Well, phi can represent a single predicate here, or it can represent uh, a more complex expression that has a certain variable in it. And here it represents the same complex expression or the same predicate. Um, going back to our, some of our examples here. Like this is a complex expression here. It's not just a single predicate. But 
when we instantiate, we change every instance of the variable here to the same uh, name. So you want to remember that. So we'll be learning about these others in a subsequent video. You have been watching For the Love of Wisdom, my YouTube channel on free thought, philosophy, and critical thinking. Uh, one thing I want to remind you about is that I'll also have a blog post on the contents of this video. So if you want to check that out, you can check the description box for the blog post. And if you like this video, please favorite it or share it or like it down below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to For the Love of Wisdom. That's all one word, and there's a button for that right here. And besides making videos on logic, I make videos on other subjects. And let me tell you about a few of those. Uh, I've started a series of videos on Bertrand Russell's book, The Conquest of Happiness. And here's the first video in that series. It's on chapter one, What Makes People Unhappy? Down below that, I have a video in which I'm reading an article from Awake Magazine from 1947. Awake Magazine is a Jehovah's Witness publication, and this article is going over the tricks that propagandists use to manipulate people. And the video includes various pictures of propaganda and pictures from Jehovah's Witness materials as they seem appropriate to what I'm reading. And below that, I have a video on an argument that David Benatar has made in favor of antinatalism, which is the position that procreation is always wrong. And I argue that David Benatar's argument for antinatalism doesn't work. So check out those videos if you like, and come back again for more videos on symbolic logic.